Today we're going to talk about inverse functions. Use Desmos or a graphing calculator to sketch the following functions on the graphs provided. Functions f and g are inverse of one another. Use the graphs to identify the pattern of inverse functions. To help us identify one of those patterns, I'm going to label the major points that I use to graph. Go ahead and pause here and graph these functions, and then press play when you're ready to check. So after graphing all of these inverse functions, let's look for the pattern. If you notice, yes, these functions have symmetry. That symmetry is not horizontal or vertical, but it's got this diagonal symmetry. That diagonal symmetry is specifically over the line y equals x. The transformation formula from f to g, represented as an ordered pair, is xy becomes yx. Each ordered pair on f of x can be found as a mirrored ordered pair on the inverse of f. For number 1, 0, 3, and 1, 7 are points on f. 3, 0, and 7, 1 are points on the inverse of f. Looking at part b, it makes sense that a cube root function is the inverse of a cubic function because cubing and cube rooting are inverse operations. So if x and y are mirrored in an inverse function, switching x and y will be instrumental in the process of finding an inverse function. The first step is to rewrite f of x as y, then exchange x and y, then solve for y, and then rewrite as f inverse of x. This is not f to the negative 1. This negative 1 is not an exponent, it is only a label, and that label means inverse. Let's try out number 2 by finding the inverse of 3x minus 1. Begin by rewriting f of x as y. Now exchange x and y. Solve for y. Now rewrite y as f inverse x. So the inverse of 3x minus 1 is x plus 1 over 3. Not all inverses are functions. The graphs of f of x equals x squared and f of x equals x cubed are shown along with their reflections in the line y equals x. Notice that the inverse of x cubed is a function, but the inverse of x squared is not a function. The inverse of x squared is a sideways parabola which is not a function. So when the domain of x squared is restricted to only non-negative real numbers, then the inverse of f is a function, such as our graph from part c, which included that restriction to the x's. The horizontal line test can tell you if the inverse is or is not a function. The inverse of a function f is also a function iff, that means if and only if. No horizontal line intersects the graph of f more than once, and that's why you can see that x cubed here passes the horizontal line test and therefore its inverse is a function, but the parabola, the quadratic, does not pass the horizontal line test, therefore its inverse will not be a function, unless it has a stated domain restriction. Determine whether the inverse of f is a function, then find the inverse. Part a is a cubic function. All cubic functions pass the horizontal line test. 
So yes, the inverse is a function. To find the inverse function, use the steps you did in number two. Rewrite f of x as y. Then exchange x and y and solve for y. You do not need to rationalize because this is a function, not an expression. So rewrite y as f inverse of x. For part b, is the inverse a function? This is a square root function, and a square root function passes the horizontal line test. So yes, the inverse of this is a function. Now find the inverse. So our inverse function is 1 fourth x squared plus 3, but only when the domain is restricted to x greater than or equal to 0. To verify inverses, functions f and g are inverses of one another if and only if f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x. Remember, that is composition. If f composed with g of x simplifies to be x, and if g composed with f of x also simplifies to be x, then f and g are inverse functions of one another. So in order to verify, we will find f composed with g of x and simplify, and then g composed with f of x and then simplify. When it asks you to verify, that means you're showing a proof which means your final step is not your answer. Every step of your work is your answer. So be neat, organized, and do not box the last step. Let's begin by plugging in the g function into x for the f function. Remember that three times a fraction could just be three over one times that fraction. Because we have a three factored in the numerator and a three in the denominator, then we can reduce and this will simplify to be x. Now we need to show the steps for g composed with f of x. Plug in the f function into the input for g. Now simplify the numerator and then reduce. Because the composition of f with g and g with f simplified to be x, then f and g are inverse functions. And remember that every step of your work is part of your answer because this verification is an example of an algebraic proof. Let's do that same process Because we have a product of 4, negative 2, and this quantity x minus 3 cubed, we can multiply the 4 and the negative 2 in front. Now I have the cube root of the product of negative 8 and x minus 3 quantity cubed. I'm going to use the property of roots that allows me to separate this cube root into a product of the cube root of two of its factors. Cube root negative 8 and cube root x minus 3 quantity cubed. We could turn 6 minus negative 2 times x minus 3 into 6 plus 2 times x minus 3. But remember, we cannot add 6 and 2 because 2 is a product with x minus 3. We need to distribute the 2 first. Simplify the numerator and then reduce. f composed with g of x simplifies to be just x. Let's compose g with f. Remember, because this entire thing is cubed, you cannot distribute in this negative 2. So first we'll need to combine this big ratio with this minus 3 by first getting a common denominator for 3. Now combine the fractions. Simplify the numerator. Now that this ratio no longer has addition or subtraction in it, you can apply this exponent of 3 to the numerator and the denominator. You cannot, however, reduce these 2's, because remember, this 2 in the denominator is still to the power of 3. Continue to simplify. Now 
and the composition of g with f is also equal to x. Now we have shown the algebraic proof for verifying that f and g are inverse functions. And every step of your work is part of your answer, so do not skip steps, show everything completely.